Hi, thank you all for taking the time to join the webinar about technical quality on Google Play. We'll be focusing on Play's new technical quality bar and new tools to help you meet it. My name's Dave. I'm a product manager for Android Vitals. I've worked on a number of Play products over the years, including Play's pre-registration features and live ops, Play game services, and now I work with our quality team. I'm excited to be talking to you about how Play thinks about quality and how our tools can help you to improve the quality of your app or game in order to make a great ecosystem where users have access to wonderful, high quality apps and games. Before we get started, let's review some do's and don'ts for the webinar. We kindly ask you to refrain from recording the session or sharing any of the content on social media. We'll be providing you with a list of links for the resources mentioned in the presentation. Towards the end of the session, I will share a link to our anonymous feedback form. This is an incredibly important tool for us at Google Play to receive your input and consider it for our upcoming webinars. So please do make sure to spend about a minute to fill out the form and help us improve. Thanks. OK, let's walk through the high-level agenda. First, we'll talk about the new technical quality bar. Then we'll discuss how Vitals can help you monitor and keep an eye on technical quality. After that, we'll discuss some new tools we've built to help you improve your crash and application not responding, also known as ANR rates, and we'll do a deep dive on some of the common types of ANRs and how to address them. And then finally, we'll touch on the frame rate metrics for games. First up, the new technical quality bar. As you can imagine, app and game quality is foundational to everything we do at Google Play. We want Play Store users to discover, download, and use great apps and games that work well, are easy to use, and are reliable. Because it's so important, we want to ensure that users are presented with the best quality apps and games for their phones. We're going to be steering users towards high quality titles and away from lower quality ones. Quality is a broad concept, and Play looks at it across several dimensions. Technical quality is one of the fundamental ones. In short, Technical quality means, does this app or game run well on my device? We've recently made two important changes to how we define technical quality. You can read more about this in the blog post from November 2022, which you can find in the link section of the webinar page. First thing is we are now looking at more user-focused metrics. Previously, Android Vitals had a crash rate and ANR rate based on all the crashes and ANRs that your app experienced. Now, we're creating new user-perceived crash and ANR rates that measure only those crashes and ANRs that were perceived by the user. That is, we're no longer counting things like background ANRs that may happen during the middle of the night housekeeping operations when you plug a phone into the charger. We've kept the bad behavior thresholds for crash and ANR rate the same. We are now only looking at the user-perceived crash and ANR events. Because user-perceived crash and ANRs are a subset of all of your crashes and ANRs, your rates will have gone down. We hope this is good news. Being on the wrong side of the bad behavior threshold still has the same effect, making your app or game less discoverable on the Play Store. The second change is that we've introduced a per-device quality bar. This bar is much lower, easier to hit bar of 8% at the moment. We expect all devices should be able to have a crash or ANR rate lower than 8%. And if an app or game has higher than an 8% crash or an ANR rate, we may display a warning in the Play Store so that users know that this particular app or game may not work well on their device. So quickly to recap, Play's quality bar is changing. Previously, we looked at the technical quality defined as crash and ANR rate with a title level lens, and we counted all crashes and ANRs equally. Now, we are looking at quality both at a title level as well as the device level of each Play Store user, and we are focusing on user-perceived crashes and ANRs. In the future, we will likely tighten the thresholds for per-device warnings to ensure the minimum bar is moved higher. We'll also be including more metrics in our definition of technical quality. I also wanted to make you aware of two great new pages we've recently published about quality. The first is developer.android.com slash quality, which goes into detail about how Play thinks about quality, including technical quality. The second one is about how featuring on Play, featuring on Play works and what part quality has in this. 
So we've discussed how Play is updating our technical quality bar and sharpening our focus on user experience and explained why this should matter to you. Now we'll deep dive into how you can monitor the technical quality of your app or game. Android Vitals is designed to help you know how your app or game performs in regards to the new technical quality bar. To help you meet the new quality guidelines, we've launched a number of new features in Android Vitals to make it easier to monitor and act on any issues. To start with, you can see the new metrics in Android Vitals in the console UI or using the Play Developer Reporting API. We've updated Android Vitals to include the new user-perceived crash rate metrics front and center. These metrics are your core vitals and you can see timeline trends and how your app or game is performing relative to the bad behavior threshold, as well as your peers. Vitals also shows you when you have an issue with your metrics with a message at the top of the page. These messages flag critical issues with your app or game and will give you a measure of the impact. While we have shown these cards for a while to warn you when your app or game has gone over the bad behavior threshold, with the introduction of per device thresholds, we have added a new critical issue when, your device, when you have devices where your app or game doesn't meet the per device threshold. In this section situation, we will tell you how many devices are missing the target, as well as what fraction of your user base this affects to give you a sense of the magnitude of the problem. When you do have a problem, Vitals helps you zero in on what's wrong in order to prioritize and act. When you go to the metric drill down page, this is where you can see the user perceived NR rate or the user perceived crash rate in more detail. We have a device table. In this table, we will show you which devices exceed the per device bad behavior threshold and allow you to filter for only devices with a problem. We also alert you to emerging bad behaviors, which are devices which we anticipate crossing the per device bad behavior thresholds if trends continue, but have not yet crossed. This gives you an opportunity to address any problems before they start impacting your app's visibility on the store or before warnings are displayed. You can also get extra information about each device in this table with the device context system. By clicking on the icon next to the device name, a side panel opens up giving you information about how your app performs for that particular device, including ratings and reviews, install base, and the top crash or ANR. Now, some of you power users may know that we have a Vitals API. You can get much of the same data we give you in the Vitals UI through this, and you can integrate it into your own internal dashboards in whatever way works for your workflow. There are already hundreds of developers using the API to enhance their internal workflows. For example, as you can see here, Gameloft has successfully used the API to enhance their internal dam dashboards and bring all their KPIs into one place to help their teams move faster. Speaking of faster, one thing we've heard from you for a long time is that you want to get Vitals data faster. Last year, we made daily Vitals crash and ANR data appear the next day. Now, we are pleased to announce that we will be bringing hourly crash rates and ANR rates to the API. You can query the API to find out your crash or ANR rate with hourly granularity. This can be helpful in detecting crash or ANR spikes due to a server-side change or a new rollout. You'll have to be clever about this though. Your hourly crash and ANR rates may have daily cycles based on time of day and local usage patterns in different parts of the world that you'll need to understand in order to interpret the hourly values. To find out more about hourly vitals, please see our API documentation at the link on the screen. And if you have an app or game large enough to have meaningful hourly rates, you can start accessing them via the API. We will let you know um, with a message on the vitals overview page when hourly vitals is available to you. As you work on improving quality and launching new features, you may feel there's a never ending series of bugs and issues that come up. You may be wondering, when am I done? We'll talk a bit more about fixing bugs shortly, and we don't expect you to fix all of the crashes and ANRs, but we want to make sure that Play users have a great experience with your app or game. So to keep your visibility high, ensure that devices that are important to you and you intend for your app or game to work on long-term meet the 8% per device threshold. 
Also, be aware that this 8% threshold is really a minimum. You should try to lower it more than this, but we realize this may be hard, so we are starting with a level we think should be generally attainable. To recap this section, Android Vitals in Play Console or via the reporting API can help you keep an eye on your technical quality of your app or game. In order to do this, make sure your team members, whose job it is to monitor and improve technical quality, have access to Play Console. It's a lot easier to use when your team can just log in and check on things. Finally, when deciding which issues to address, think about the experience of your existing users as well as new users. If your crash or ANR rate don't meet the 8% bar for certain devices, users with those devices who go on to install your app or game may see a warning message. Think about whether these devices are important to your strategy to help you prioritize improvements. So far, we've talked about the new technical quality bar and why you need to care about technical quality, as well as how you can use Android Vitals to monitor your app or game to know if you have a problem, whether it's at the title level or at the device level. But once you know you have a quality issue, how do you improve it? In this section, we'll talk about new tools in Android Vitals to help you fix quality issues in order to improve your crash and ANR rate. The first place you should go when trying to fix crash or ANRs is the Vitals Crashes and ANRs page. Here, we list out the specific crashes and ANRs that are affecting your app or game sorted by affected users. As a quick refresher, you can jump into a details page for any crash or ANR to get more context and detail. Each issue contains helpful time series, histograms, and stack traces or thread dumps to help you understand the issue and how it's impacting your users. With the Vitals Crashes and ANRs page as the hub for fixing issues, there are a number of new features I'm excited to tell you about today. Firstly, ways to help you with debugging. And secondly, and perhaps most exciting, in some cases, we can even tell you what the fix is. First, we'll talk about features that help you debug. Some of Play's new products, Google Play Games on Windows or Play as you download, make a game run in a different way in order to reach a new audience. Sometimes this can cause a crash. When a crash is caused by the Google Play Games on Windows platform or the Play As You Download feature, which is very rare, we annotate it in Android Vitals with an insight so you know that this isn't something you can take this isn't something you can take action on. You can hide these issues to clear them out of your issues list. Crashes that are reported in Vitals are also reported to the relevant Google teams so they have the info to fix them. This is designed to help you focus on issues where you can have the most impact. Now, we'll talk about an example of debugging help around ANRs. Later in this talk, we'll discuss some of the more common causes of ANRs and how to fix them in more detail, but I wanted to start with an example about unactionable ANRs, which is a common problem that many of you face. You may have noticed that some of your biggest ANR clusters, or those of these issues in the crashes and ANRs list, are really hard to take action on. The thread dumps don't seem to show the problem. Here's what's happening. When an ANR is detected, the OS is asked to capture a thread dump. But sometimes by the time the, stack, the thread dump is captured, the ANR isn't happening anymore. When this happens, the stack trace that is captured shows either normal operation if the ANR resolves between the, when the ANR was detected and when the system captured the thread dump, or it shows nothing if the app or the game was killed by the operating system. We've created an insight called main thread idle for issues or ANRs when the thread, thread dump hasn't captured the problem. Not capturing what we'll call the guilty thread dump is non-deterministic. ANRs are a bit squirrely and sometimes the thread dump shows the guilty code and sometimes it doesn't. When an ANR thread dump shows main thread idle, the actual underlying cause of the ANR could be many different things. 
Imagine you have five different errors that lead to ANRs in your app. Sometimes the OS captures the guilty thread dump, and sometimes it captures normal operation. When it captures the guilty thread, the vitals will group it into one of five ANRs in your issues list, corresponding to those five different errors. But when the OS detects normal operation because it's missed the guilty thread dump, it groups it into a sixth main thread idle ANR because the parts of the thread dump we use for grouping bring them that, those, all these different ones together. Because there are five different underlying ANRs that are feeding into this sixth ANR with main thread idle, the main thread idle ANR will often be the biggest in your ANR list. So what to do about these main thread idle ANRs? Not capturing the guilty thread dump is non-deterministic. So you can expect that the actual underlying problems that when the OS doesn't capture the guilty thread dump create the main thread idle issue will already be in your ANR's issue list. We suggest that you ignore ANRs with a main thread idle insight and instead focus on fixing ANRs that do have useful thread dumps. By fixing other ANRs, you will reduce the occurrences of main thread idle ANRs. You may even want to hide main thread idle ANRs so they're not distracting in your issues list. We'll talk later about other ANR insights that help you fix problems. And we have a pipeline of insights that we'll be adding over time. We hope these insights will help you be more productive and you can tell us which are helpful using handy thumbs up, thumbs down system in the Vitals UI. As a final example, we'll talk about debugging native memory errors. Native memory errors are a big source of crashes, accounting for about 50% of occurrences. Memory errors are bad both for users and a security risk, and Vitals now helps make it easier to find the root cause of native memory errors. Let's explore how. A major type of memory error is a use after free. These can be difficult to track down because when a memory location is used after freeing, different things can happen. The app or game can crash, the game can do something funny if the memory contents have changed, but the memory isn't reserved by another process and the contents don't crash your game. Or the game can keep running fine if the memory contents are as they are were left. This makes it hard to track down and fix these issues. Whip ASAN is a system that will force crash a game or an app when it detects an illegal memory access. It only does this a small fraction of the time, so it minimally affects your crash rate. When group ASAN force crashes your game, the stack trace generated ex explains what the problem was and extra stack traces for the memory allocation and deallocation may also be collected. All of this extra information is now displayed in the vital stack traces. And when we have stack traces with GWP ASAN information, we put them first in the stack trace viewer so you don't have to search to find them. This can make it much easier to track down and fix memory errors. You can enable GWP ASAN with a single line change in your manifest follow. Follow the link on the screen for instructions for help reducing your crash rate. Now we'll talk about some features that will actually tell you how to fix the issues. We're pretty excited about these. First, we have a project we call SDK Notes. Some of the crashes that occur in your app may be due to code that you don't control. Often, these crashes happen in an SDK that you use. Play has a product called SDK Console where SDK developers can register their SDK and learn about crashes that are caused by their SDK. With SDK Notes, SDK developers can provide suggestions for how to fix crashes that are caused by their SDK. These are potential fixes for these issues written by the SDK developers themselves. If your app is affected by a crash caused by an SDK, and the SDK developer has provided a note, you will see the note in the details page of that issue. These notes should help you quickly know what to do to fix the problem, whether that's updating the SDK to a newer version or changing the details of the integration. Not every SDK-related crash will have a note, but there should be more over time. And in the future, if your app has a crash that is related to an SDK that's registered with SDK Console, will allow you to report it to the SDK developer and send some more detailed stack trace information to help them investigate the issue. And hopefully they'll write a note back telling you how to fix the problem. SDK notes are an example of this new concept in Vitals we're calling insights. And we'll talk about another insight. 
The second one uh, we're going to talk about is we're going to we can tell you about issues that are caused by not updating the mutability of pending intents. In November 2022, it became required to update the Android Target SDK to API level 31 for app updates. When this requirement went into effect, many apps updated the Target SDK but didn't make the necessary code changes to support API level 31. Specifically, apps need to specify the mutability of each pending intent. If this is not specified, the app will crash on phones running Android 12 and newer. This is actually accounting for a large fraction of crashes in the Android ecosystem right now. If Vitals detects a crash caused by the pending intent missing a mutability, we will show a message explaining the cause and what you need to do to fix it. This is another example of a suggested fix where we know exactly what you need to do to fix the problem, and we're going to tell you about it in Android Vitals. These features are designed to help you make the most of the crashes in ANR's page and really designed to help you improve your productivity, helping you filter out ANRs that aren't actionable so you can spend your time looking at problems you can take action on or seeing extra information to make it easier to debug a native memory error. If you use another crash reporting SDK, such as Crashlytics, you may want to start visiting Vitals Crashes in ANR's page to see this extra information we now have available. Now, I know that ANRs are some of the trickiest issues to understand and fix. I touched on one type of debug guidance around ANRs just a moment ago, but now I'm going to go through some more common types of ANR in more detail and explain how to approach fixing them and demonstrate how we're going to use Vitals to show this advice to you right when you need it. But first, a few basics. ANRs occur when the main thread, also called the UI thread, of an Android app is blocked for too long. To a user, this looks and feels like an app is frozen. Sometimes the ANR gets resolved on its own, sometimes the OS kills the app, and sometimes the user manually kills the app and hopefully reopens it. All Android developers need to be familiar with ANRs. They affect all types of apps and games and can be tricky to track down and especially to reproduce as they can be affected by the state of the system overall. You can see on this slide some resources you can use to learn more about ANRs. User perceived ANRs are a subset of all ANRs. Some ANRs, many in fact, occur when the user isn't actually using the app or game. They may happen during a data refresh or during housekeeping operations that are deferred until the evening when a user plugs their phone in to charge. User perceived ANRs are the ones that users do encounter when using your app or game and look like a freeze. These are input dispatching timeout ANRs, which is something you can now filter for in Android Vitals, and they're triggered when your app hasn't responded to an input event within five seconds. These are ANRs that are really frustrating to users, which is why Play is focusing on the user perceived ANR rate and therefore user perceived ANRs. Now let's talk a little bit about why you should address ANRs. You want to keep your game's ANR rate below play's bad behavior threshold, of course. But ANRs can make it hard for users to engage properly with your app, which can lead to reduced engagement and revenue. Fixing ANRs, conversely, can increase engagement and revenue by ensuring that your users can use your app as it was designed to be used. You can see from this case study, which you now read on your own at the link provided, how OK Credit increased key business KPIs by reducing ANRs and enabling their users to have a better experience in their app. Now, let's start looking at some common types of ANRs and how to address them. One thing to note is that for each ANR cause that we discuss, Android Vitals will show an insight on the issues details page when we detect that particular ANR cause. I mentioned insights before, and this is the common design that we use in the UI to get information about that insight across. You'll only see these insights if we detect the particular problem. So these are very targeted to the specific issues. The insights will comprise a message in the insight section and some annotations to the stack trace to show you where the problem is and provide some guidance. One common cause of ANRs are slow binder calls. Binder is Android's inter-process communication mechanism. Binder calls can be expensive, and their duration can be unpredictable. In general, you should avoid making binder calls on the main thread. 
If you do make binder calls, you should instrument these calls to detect slowness that can result in ANRs. If your binder calls are causing ANRs, you can consider moving them to a different thread. In vitals, when we detect it, we'll highlight the binder call that seems to be taking a long time. Up next is IO in the main thread. Input-output operations can be very unpredictable and can block a thread for a long time. You should avoid IO in the main thread at all costs. If you're seeing this type of error, you should refactor your code so IO operations are done in a separate thread and not the main thread. IO can typically be network or file operations, but can also be something seemingly innocuous like loading a class. In vitals, as you can see, we highlight where IO is taking place and let you know you should put IO in a separate thread. Another cause of ANRs is the main thread being blocked while trying to acquire a lock that's held by another thread, which may be doing IO or a binder call. If this takes too long, an ANR is triggered. To avoid this, try to minimize the use of locks in the main thread. If you do need to use locks, ensure whoever holds the lock doesn't hold it for long. Some operations, like IO or binder calls, have unpredictable durations, which makes it more likely for an AR, ANR timeout to occur. These should be avoided while holding a lock. In vitals, when the lock con contention to condition is detected, we highlight where the main thread is trying to acquire the lock, and we identify which thread is holding the lock and where the lock is being held, and we show these in the UI. Next is native lock contention. This happens when the main thread is blocked waiting on a native synchronization routine, like a mutex. For games, a mutex is usually used to wait for the CPU and GPU steps of frame rendering. In those cases, it is a good indication that the game's fidelity may have to be lowered on the affected device models. Native synchronization routines do not, unfortunately, provide details on the exact lock or where it's being held. You'll need to find the locked mutex in your source code, then locate other code locations where it's being acquired and see if any of these can block, block the main thread. You can use Android Studio's profiler to detect lock contention of multiple threads frequently competing for the same lock. For this type of issue, vitals show where the native synchronization routine blocking the main thread is. Finally, as I mentioned earlier in the talk, we also have main thread ILA ANRs where the OS fails to capture the guilty thread dump. These types of ANRs should be ignored and you should focus on ANRs that do have useful thread dumps that show the problem, like the ones I've just talked about. We will be showing insights and recommendations for all these types of ANRs in Android Vitals. When you look at an issues details page for an issue where you can detect one of these causes, we'll show you the message to help you understand the problem and hopefully have an idea of what to do next to solve the problem. Between the various different causes and situations, we'll be showing insights for around 20% of ANR clusters, which should help you address ANRs more productively. These are all available in Vitals today, so you can go to the Crashes and ANRs page and look at some of the ANRs. You should see some of these guidance. So I've just walked through some of the ways that Vitals is going to help you know what's happening with a particular crash or ANR. But what about those where we aren't providing debug guidance or potential fixes? Here's a bit of a laundry list of other tools and techniques you can try. It's worth looking at things like Perfetto and ADM as they can provide a lot of extra context, but it's tricky, especially for ANRs, as you have to reproduce the issues to really take advantage of these tools. But see where you can incorporate these tools into your workflow to help with debugging. Finally, we're going to discuss a new frame rate metric that's designed for games. Why are we making a games only metric, you may wonder. Android Vitals has reported on frame rate metrics for years, but these metrics only show frame only show rates for frames rendered using the Android UI toolkit. If you go to Vitals, the Vitals overview today, you'll see a section called Android UI toolkit toolkit with metrics for slow frames and frozen frames with an explanation of the scope. This is useful for apps, but given that games typically use OpenGL or Vulkan, I expect most game developers here have not found these metrics relevant. and You've needed to invest in your own solutions for monitoring this critical metric. Some of you may recall that we launched an SDK powered solution 
for frame rate metrics back in 2020 called Android Performance Tuner. And we have a large number of titles using it. But we recognize that implementing an SDK requires effort and may not be feasible for all game developers. So I'm pleased to tell you that as a result of advances in the Android platform over the years, we're now able to offer an SDK free frame rate solution for game developers within Android Vitals. This allows you to monitor frame rate metrics with no upfront investment, although it is complementary to Android Performance Tuner if you've already integrated that. The first frame rate metric for games is called slow session rate. We wanted to include a metric for frame rates but rather than just reporting frame rate, which is included within this metric, we wanted the metric to be opinionated about the user experience. And we wanted to make you, the developer, aware of problematic experiences expecting your users so you can fix them and improve the user experience in your game. So we have slow session rate. A slow session is one in which too many of the frame frames are rendered slowly, that is, slower than a target frame rate. So let's dive into some details. I'm gonna break this into three parts. First, how we measure frame rates. Second, how we define a slow session. And lastly, how we calculate your game's slow session rate. So let's start with how we measure frame rate. We use Surface Flinger, Android's compositor, to measure the timing of each frame your game renders. Surface Flinger measures present to present time of all frames, regardless of whether, whether they are rendered with OpenGL, Vulkan, or even Android UI Toolkit. Surface Flinger has existed for many years, so we are able to provide frame rate metrics for devices rendering, running Android 9 or newer. This is over 75% coverage, so you should get a good representation of your user population, which may have a different makeup of Android versions. During a session, Android Vitals measures the frame rates of all frames, and we keep track of how fast they're rendered. Now, let's talk about how we define a slow session. Many of you probably know this already, but just as a reminder, the key to understanding any frame rate metric is to remember that each frame in a session can render at a different frame rate. So we tabulate the frame rates over the course of a session, and then we apply a threshold. During the course of the session, many things happen besides the game loop. There's the startup sequence, starting, the day, starting up the game, loading, looking at menus. Sometimes you may lower the frame rate intentionally, or it may dip during gameplay during a particularly complex scene. In short, there are good reasons for a game to run slower than a target sometimes. We took this into account when creating the definition of a slow session. Now, you're probably thinking, what is the target frame rate? We've set the target frame rate at 30 frames per second. When setting this threshold, we considered the fact that many that there are many types of games available on play, from puzzles to racing games. At 30 frames per second, we'd be confident that users are having a reasonable experience regardless of what type of game they're playing. Now, it's also fair to say that in certain cases, many users may not consider 30 frames per second to be enough, especially on high-end phones. Many gamers will, or many games will benefit from targeting 60 frames per second. So think of 30 FPS as a minimum that we'd like you to aim for, not necessarily the ideal. At the same time, we've already acknowledged that there may be good reasons to render frames below 30 FPS at times. And we realize that even unintentional variations can be hard to avoid completely. So we've defined a slow session as one is where more than 25% of the frames are rendered slower than the target frame rate. This means we allow for up to 25% of your frames in a session to miss the 30 frames per second threshold before we consider it to be slow, which gives some leeway for menus, loading screens, complex scenes, and the like. So if 35% of the frames are rendered slower than the target, the session is considered slow. If 23% of the frames are rendered slower than the target frame rate, the session is not slow. This means you don't have to try to hit the target with every frame. Work to ensure your game loop is running smoothly at the target frame rate, and you should be fine. You may, also you may also find that users want to play your game on lower performing devices and are accepting of the trade-offs with battery life, heat, and performance. We're going to set a lower bar than 30 frames per second, at which we consider the user experience to be so poor that we would ultimately want to steer a user away from this game experience. This bar is 20 frames per second. 
Again, we recognize that dropping frame rate is often desired even on action games, and for some casual games, users can tolerate slower frames in the core loop. But even in these scenarios, we still expect the game to be able to achieve at least 75% of the frames rendered at 20 frames per second. So the 30 frames per second target will tell you how many users are have not quite having a good experience. And the 20 frames per second target will tell me how many of your users are likely to be having a very poor experience. So now we've talked about how we measure frame rates and how we determine if a particular session is slow. In order to get slow session rate, we then look at all of your sessions and calculate what fraction of the sessions are slow. We evaluate slow session rate separately for 30 FPS and 20 FPS targets. So you have a different slow session rate at 30 frames per second and at 20 frames per second. As with other vitals metrics, like user perceived crashing in our rates, you can use filters and breakdown tables to explore your slow session, session rate performance and investigate how it varies across various dimensions, such as device model or Android version. We'll discuss this more shortly, but slow session rate varies meaningfully by device model. And this is something you should become familiar with. I started out by saying that frame rate is a key measure of user experience on games and plays a big role in a user's ability to be immersed in your game. It's important to users is the reason why we've invested in supporting it more in Vitals by bringing a no investment required solution to all of our developers. This is also why in due course, the slow session metric at the minimum 20 FPS target is going to become part of play's quality bar alongside user perceived crash and rate and user perceived ANR rate for games specifically. This mean, what this means is that slow sessions will have a per device bad behavior threshold similar to user perceived crash and ANR rates. And when your title exceeds the bad behavior threshold for a given phone model, like for example, a Pixel 3, then Google Play may reduce the discoverability of your title for users on that phone model. This may mean it becomes ineligible for some discovery surfaces, and in certain cases, we may show a warning on the store listing to indicate to users that your game may not perform well on their phone. We understand that it takes time to get used to new metrics. Even if you've been monitoring your frame rate outside of vitals, there can be differences in measurement methodologies. And so you will have at least a couple of months before we confirm the launch date for the bad behavior threshold, as well as what the value it will be set at. You can find out more details about our new slow session metric and ways to improve slow session rate in a talk I did at the Google Game Developer Summit, which you can find at the link on the screen. So that takes us to the end of the talk. To recap what we've covered, first, we talked about Play's new quality bar with a tighter focus on user perceived issues and the introduction of per device quality. We followed with a discussion about how you can use Android Vitals to monitor your quality metrics and use the API to get faster access to user perceived crash and ANR rates with hourly data. We then talked about debugging guidance and suggested fixes that we're beginning to show in Android Vitals crashes and ANRs page to help you understand and fix problems faster. And finally, we talked about the new slow session metric for game frame rate performance, which will become one of the core vitals alongside user perceived crash and ANR rates in due course and will be evaluated at the per device level. So what can you do with all this? You should take the time to understand Play's new quality bar and how your app or game performs. Explore Android vitals to understand where issues may occur Make a plan of how often you'll check in on your vitals metrics to stay on top of them. You should also explore the debugging guidance and suggested fixes available in the crashes and ANRs page and make sure that the engineers who can benefit from this information the most have access to Play Console. And finally, if you're a game developer, familiarize yourself with the new slow session metric and how your game performs. This will become part of the quality bar in due course.